Thank you, Nigel. Well, welcome everyone here this evening. Uh, it's great to see so many families online. We did have a technical hitch, but I think we're back on board. So we're looking forward to our presentation with you tonight. But before we begin, I would like to pay my respects to all Aboriginal people, past, present and emerging, and acknowledge that we are on Gadigal people, sorry, the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. So welcome here tonight. We're really excited to be presenting here this evening because it's all about how we're going to support our students returning to school. And it was a really lovely day today with our um, Are You OK Day, and it is part of our Wellbeing Week. So it was a true um, indication of the spirit of Inner Sydney, the way in which our students exp express their need to support each other, as well as looking out for themselves as well. So it was a really great day today at Inner Sydney High School. It's been, it's been a lovely Wellbeing Week, and, and just a big shout out to all our incredible mentors, lead mentors, and our students. There will be a clip uh, that you can all see that will be sent out in our update for the email um, for the RUIK day. So thank you to all the students that contributed because that really adds that richness to what we're doing here and that sense of connection. But first of all, this evening, what we're going to be doing is really running through for you the current um, Department of Education restrictions. So we really want to sort of um, have a think forward about what it's going to look like for school when you return to school next term, hopefully on the 8th of November but also really explore what matters most to us at the moment, how we can prepare you for what it's going to be like for school next term. And that's also touching on social connection and wellbeing, and as well as we keep on saying, most importantly, about emotional wellbeing. And I think the interesting thing is, Robin, that, you know, we do have rules of engagement. Um, so when we return, it will be under a stage three plus restrictions um, that is set out from the Department of Education. Now, that doesn't mean that it won't change, but what it means is, is at the very least we know exactly where we stand as we come back if everything sort of remains as normal which fingers crossed they will now under those restrictions i think it's important to understand that these are the rules of engagement for us there will not be singing sport bands ensembles inter school activities assembly school performances excursion camps and community events so essentially all those things that we do hold quite dear for the time being just to ensure that everyone is safe when they return they will be temporarily paused but obviously, as we move through the stages and get back to what is some sort of normality, uh, we will be able to offer those. But for now, that, I guess, sets the parameter and the context for the plan. And that the school has been busy doing. So what does it look like, Rob? Um, we are looking forward to most of all. We are so looking forward to seeing our students and our teachers back together. There will be some new members of staff we'll be able to meet. And I think a great uh, positive about our school is our school uniform. So you will be wearing our school uniform again. We will be able to use our facilities and in particular our specialty facilities. And also, which might sound a bit funny, but it's actually travelling to and from school will be actually an experience that we'll really enjoy doing. Also, you'll be leaving home to learn, obviously. And one thing that we've really reflected on is I think we're going to see our students have really grown up and matured in the time that we have been away from school. But as you can see, what's going to be different? And of course, there will be some really significant As you can see tonight, Chris and I are both wearing our masks, and that will be the case for all teachers and students wearing masks both inside and outside of school. Pretty much the whole theme of the um, restrictions is about minimising the contact between year groups. And that is our task and that's what we'll need to be doing. So we will be looking at separate entry and exit points for our year groups. And I want to reassure you that all teachers actually have to be double banned for teachers to actually be on site by the 8th of November. So I know many of our staff now are very busy. You and I already vaccinated. have already got our double vaccinated. Double vaccinated for so a few weeks it's now. just something that I want you um, to be aware of that all teachers have, they are actually not allowed um, to present for duty. There will be some changes in the way our library and our cafe will be used. And we'll also be fairly creative in terms of what our year meetings and our assemblies will actually look like. As Chris mentioned, sport and extracurricular activities. It's going to be very challenging for us. And unfortunately, at the moment, it looks like sport is actually being put on hold. But also, unfortunately, for parents, we had a great run earlier in the year. We had many parents on site, and it was wonderful to have you on board and on site. But unfortunately, moving forward, there will be no visitors on site. 
I think, you know, while we've got that, I think but we, we turn to what matters most, Robin, um, and we did put together a bit of a top six because so many of these are really important for us in terms of delivering here on site at school. And I think the first one is a mantra that you'll live by for, for many times, and I've heard it mentioned many times in assemblies and with students. Do you want to go through that for me? I think it's really important, everybody, that we need to understand as difficult it has been. For us, lockdown is a temporary state. We know that life will get back to a new norm. It won't be the same as what it was before this, um, this current pandemic and the situation we're facing with Delta. But it really is a temporary state. And what we're really trying to do is to ensure that our students are now engaged in, in authentic learning. It's not just busy work. It's not just filling in the gaps. It's actually really important for growth. So for us, lockdown is a temporary state. And what we're really aiming for and preparing our students for is for that return to school. And I think it's important to consider what's coming up. We're up to now week nine. We literally have six more days of school. And then we have the two weeks of holidays. So it's really important to use those school holidays to have that refresher, to have that time away from the screens. And I'll be honest and say to you as a principal, we probably want our students to have a break from work. We Absolutely. really want to see you have a, have, have a break because it has been such an intense time being at home all of that time. So if we think about it and de chunk the time, we have six days of term three, we have our two weeks break. Then we're heading into five weeks of remote learning, which will really prepare our students and our families for what it's like to return to school on the 8th of November. And yes, I know I'm probably sounding very optimistic, but that is a date that we have been told we have to aim for. Now, I also understand that we have many families that will be unsure about sending their child, and that is your, your choice, and we can certainly work through that with you. But it's certainly our commitment to deliver quality learning opportunities for students, whether that's on site or whether that's at home. So, as I mentioned earlier, so important to change, you know, for the, for the school holidays, have that change, please refresh. And I think it's so important that we need to ensure that when our students return, that all that we do is preparing our students for learning when the restrictions lift. And, and that's really important for us. And, and finally, as you can imagine, safety is our number one priority. The safety of our students, the safety of our staff, and we know that will be challenging, but that is our task and that's what systems will put in place to ensure the safety for students and for our teachers. And I'm curious with our community too, because you spoke about de-chunking, you know, these time periods, and it is important to have that refresh. So I reckon it would be great to see people throw in the chat, what are you going to be doing these holidays? What is it that is going to fill your company is going to differentiate between remote learning and the school holidays that, that are uh, you know, in front of us for those two weeks? It is really interesting and it is about wellbeing, getting ready to come back face to face and that social connection. That's right. So if we set that up as our sort of our concept, that's what we're aiming for. That is our premise. And what are the considerations? Because we do understand that during remote learning, you have been working in a really flexible environment. And then we consider what's going to be like coming back to inner Sydney. You'll be back at school, seeing students, connecting with teachers, seeing friends, and hopefully making new friends as well. So I suppose it comes back to the reality of school, doesn't it? It does. It means getting to school on time, ready for learning, taking pride in wearing the school uniform, and following our timetable so that we actually can meet our course requirements. Yeah, it's that muscle memory, Robin, that we really want to help our students prepare for. It's about making sure that they are ready to thrive. So moving forward, if we think about our social connections and wellbeing, and of course, that's probably been the most challenging part of our online learning, isn't it? So when we do return to school, there'll be many opportunities for students to, to really engage with other students, as well as, as I mentioned before, perhaps um, making new friends as well. I love, to yeah, I love some of the opportunities. Like we will be, you know, shifting and pivoting with integral elements of our school. So for example, leadership opportunities, they will look different, but they will still be there. The year meetings and assemblies, I mean, we have really struck gold with what our lead mentors have been doing in those touch points in the morning. The feedback from our community has been really powerful and very reaffirming for what we are doing here because there is a lot of effort that goes there, but that effort is so well valued that it is worth the effort that we are doing. 
Um, obviously, class and cohort wellbeing activities, it is important to have the distinction that it will have to be cohort. As much as we would love to do a whole inner Sydney high school um, wellbeing activity, we unfortunately cannot do that, but we will make sure that there is as much social connection and wellbeing and interaction as possible. And I think also those, those structures that we did talk about in the touchdown sessions that will focus on the social connections. And I mean, we're closing our fast film fest and I think the photography closes tomorrow. So I hope everyone's, you know, busy getting involved in all of these great activities that we've pivoted towards to give you opportunities that sit outside the classroom. And also on that, you can see that in response to, um, I suppose, your requests about some social connections in the online world, um, we know that we've been having quizzes on Thursday break twos um, as, as, and Friday as well. So if our students actually really engage with those opportunities and we can follow those through for the next term yeah. as well. Imagine it like sitting in the library and participating in some great activities there. A big shout out to Miss Fraser, who's done a fantastic job of that with Miss Witherden and opening it as a virtual room. So that is something that we have heard from our community and we are making sure that we do meet those needs of our students. So emotional wellbeing, Robin, I think that's a really important one because a lot of families out there will say, well, we have taken a bit of a hit here during yep. COVID. What is the school going to be able to do there? Well, what we're going to do is we think that for so many people and adults included, that the return to, to school will be actually quite a challenging space. So it's really important that we continue our monitoring, just like we've been doing actually during remote learning. But we'll make sure that any students or any concerns will be followed up with our head teacher wellbeing and our, and our wellbeing team. So there'll be lots of wellbeing checks for identified students that may need some additional support. And that will happen through our learning sessions, just like we would do normally through touchdown and through, as I mentioned, our wellbeing meetings. We also have two school counsellors. We're really fortunate to have an experienced counsellor in um, Doug Graham, as, as well as Vanessa Carl. So she's a new counsellor we have on board. So I think we still want to continue that self-referral process that we have in place for students now. But I also think we're going to actually need you as, as families to actually let us know too, in terms of families can request some counsellor support and some referrals to know where to turn to. Because I think this has been such a, a critical time for so many people and such a challenging time that it's going to be a bit of a shock for all of us um, as we progress into the world again. So we want to make sure that we have all of our, our wellbeing systems in place and those check-ins available. So as we said before, not just in remote learning, but also returning to school. And I think that communication, once again, will be really, really important. I think there will be a, a very much an excitement when we return, and then will be the reality of settling back to, to life again at school. But we'll certainly have our systems in place, and we will be really asking you as well to let us know if there are any flags or any concerns that you might have. It's that empowerment, Robin, isn't it? Absolutely. It really is. And I mean, that notion that we speak of constantly, and that's about making sure that there is that partnership that we work together because we have had our greatest heroes have actually been in the household. It's been our secondary teachers. It's been our teachers that have sat there as parents and just been such advocates for their child's learning. So real, a real shout out to each and every one of you. I cannot begin to, actually I can begin to imagine because I have seen it in my household, but can I just say um, what you have all done here has been absolutely incredible, but that partnership working together, Robin, is something that's really important in preparing for face-to-face. -face. And what do we need to know about that? <laughs> Well, I think it's really important, Chris, that we really believe that this whole journey has been working together. Um, so I suppose how we want to phrase it is our returning to school actually starts now. So during the course of what we've got remaining in terms of remote learning, the, what we really want to do and what matters most is about our student wellbeing. And it's also about growth and attainment. As I mentioned earlier, we do not want to see this period as being lost. We want to maximise every opportunity and that's why we're really calling out our students to make the most of all the opportunities and we know that it is challenging and it can be really difficult within that online environment but we do ask to take part in the different opportunities which are available because that's something that which we can take from remote learning and bring that into um, our on-site learning as well. And it's never too late to build that momentum. So even if you've sat there and gone, well, look, this has been a really tough time. And can I just say across, not just this school, but all schools, 
the difficulty with engaging with remote learning. Our students, credit to them and their absolute tenacity to be able to follow those programs and empower themselves to be able to do so has been really fantastic. But if you have felt that you've hit a bit of a speed hump, it doesn't mean that from now you can't sit there and start to build towards something. We have that end date in sight. And what's really important now is how families can actually help. There's some really simple things because it is what matters most. And some of those elements are really important. So making sure for your family in terms of helping your child to, to thrive and to flourish and not just survive this period where we're going to transition back to face-to-face -face because life will return to normal. I don't know Absolutely. what sort of normal that will look like, but it will be a normal that isn't what we're in today. And I think that families really need to understand it is those little things when we reach out and say the meat house and the touchdown, so important because it's about building a child holistically. It's not just about the academic. It is actually about understanding that well-being underpins everything that we do. And if a child that is feeling safe and happy is a child that will thrive. So make sure that you encourage that. Meet nows happen every morning. Touchdown happens four times a week. Get your child involved in that. Even if you feel that they've found it a bit difficult, let's start that process again. We have that end goal in sight. We are building towards it. Where possible, follow the timetable. We've talked about being yes. uh, working remotely and flexibly. But for a lot of families, we are really fortunate. Our one-to-one -one devices allow all students to access their work. We have made allowances and been able to support students that have had Wi-Fi concerns. If you have any of those concerns, please reach out to us. We are more than happy to assist and we are able to do things probably that, you know, you might not necessarily be aware of from the role of a school, but we are very passionate about what we can do to make sure that that playing field is as level as possible for all students. Please reach out if you need any help. And make the most of the remote learning extracurricular activities for connection. So I mentioned the, field, the, the photography competition that's run by our incredible leadership team. I know that that closes tomorrow, but I know that there are other opportunities that are out there. And just please keep an eye out. Where we tend to send this information is obviously through our, our updates that happen Monday, Wednesday, Friday, through these community Zooms. And obviously for our students through the touchdown groups and teams that your lead mentors lead. And they have been, it was interesting when we spoke about it in wellbeing today, they have been just so exhilarating, such energy in those spaces. So thank you everyone, because you all have contributed to that. Another quick thing that is coming up for year eight students, for example, we do not stop learning. So what we are doing is with our English that is coming up, there are books that you will need to do as part of your next um, assessment that you'll be doing within the school. Every student will have an opportunity to borrow a book from the school. So there will be an email sent out about that. Please keep an eye out for that. And obviously it will be COVID safe. A lot of our staff are already double vaccinated. So we're taking every precaution, Robin, that we possibly can. Absolutely. And I just think it's so important if we just go back to the idea about following the timetable. What we want to do is set up our students up for success next term when they do return. So if we once again go back to that idea about the timing, when we return, we'll have five weeks of remote, then we'll move into five weeks of face-to-face -face teaching. So if we can encourage students as much as possible just to follow those timetables, and, and I think that's a really important way that we can actually really encourage that a smooth transition back to face-to-face -to -face teaching. So in summary, Robert, what do we need to think about? Look, I think what we need to do is that, as you would know, the information, it is a changing landscape all the time. So tonight, I suppose, we wanted to just touch base with you all to let you know that we are busy planning for next term, but we really can't be too definitive in terms of the plans until we actually get further advice from the Department of Education and also New South Wales Health. So that information will be coming through next term. But I suppose in summary, we just have to think about it like this. Once again, it's about safety. It's about reducing the mingling in the year groups. And that really means that we have to keep our year sevens and our year eights separate, which is a shame, but it's what we need to do. And part of this is about contact tracing. So what we need to do is ensure that we have our, all of our systems in place to make sure that if there's ever a concern or an issue, it can be traced immediately. And that's why that mingling has to be reduced. We have to reduce um, and restrict those non-essential activities. Um, as I mentioned before, about staff being fully vaccinated. They're not actually staff not allowed on site unless we are um, the double vaccinations. And as I mentioned earlier too, we do need to cater for the needs of students who, who may choose to continue in remote learning. And I think that's something that we have actually done really well at Inner Sydney High School. If you remember in our last week of term, when we actually had students working from home during our slip, 
So we actually have thought about that, haven't we, Chris, in relation to what that might look like to cater for the needs of our students who may choose to remain at home. And I think in, in that instance, we will be looking at co-teaching to ensure there will be the same delivery of work. Which is fantastic. And look, I guess essentially our next steps, we will be touching base again in term four and we'll be presenting specifics that your, the family and students need to know about what we are doing here today. We also will be able to just sort of, I think on a side note, Robin, it's really important just to note that charges that were made for sport and yes. extracurricular activities, you will not be charged for the weeks that you have not used that. So please rest assured, I know there might be a fair few families here where COVID has really hit um, home and, and made a lot of difficult uh, decisions that have needed to be made on the back of that. So please understand that do not worry about this. We will reach out in term four as to what that looks like but we are well aware that we have fees here at the school that have been collected and the students have not had that opportunity to participate in those extracurricular or sporting activities. Now I'm just going to stand up everyone and just get the lights on because we are in the dark, so bear with me for a minute. This is what happens when we're at 6.30. We actually do have a really fantastic eco um, sensors that really make sure that we are, I guess, a sustainable <laughs> That's right. So thank you for that, Robin. But we did also have our lights that we do um, with these really incredible uh, vlogs and podcasts that we do. So just very quickly, I guess now we open up to you some questions um, and some answers. Now, obviously there might be a few questions of things that we haven't touched on um, because we are trying to make sure that what we give you is as current as possible, but we're starting with a bit of a starting point, like an overarching example of what we are looking at. So Mr. Kwan, I know that you are there. Thank you very much for everyone for being patient with our technical difficulties too. We do appreciate it. Yeah, um, that's okay, sir. Um, I, I'm sure you'll get to see those um, on, on your screens as well. But um, we've we've just touched on it a little bit, so um, we can we can describe it in a bit more detail. The first question was from uh, Megan Motto. Do you foresee a long term future where blended learning is a part of modern schooling, i.e., an option for on site or at home? And before I pass over, um, I think that blended learning is always something us uh, we as a school have been interested in and, and trying to promote with our one-to-one -one, um, device strategy. So I think that idea of blended learning is something that is a, a, a school priority, but whether that looks like um, being having an option for on-site or at home in the long, long term, um, that, that's a little bit different to what people usually mean um, when, when we talk about blended learning. Um, Chris or Robin, did you want to add to that? I think what I was just going to say, Nigel, is that I think there's going to be elements that, we, that we've learned through this process. And I think we, we've all learned a lot as educators, I'll be honest with you. And I think there'll be elements of our practice that we can actually take into our on-site learning. And who knows in the future, there may be the opportunities. Um, we don't have that crystal ball. I think the way in which, and I really, really appreciate your comments there, Megan, um, in relation to the delivery of, of our online learning. And I think there are, as I said, there will be elements that we could take on board. I think not everyone is probably in the same position as us. We're not, we're really fortunate here at Inner Sydney High School. So I think there has to be something because we're such a large education system that it might be difficult to have that as um, something across the board. But you know what, who knows? But I would also like to say too, that moving forward as we look as and the way in which we are looking at celebrating student work, there may be the opportunity to dip in and dip out of online learning, considering how well our students have actually engaged in the process. Yeah, very good, Robin. And I know that that sort of leads on to, from Anonymous, just about the idea of keeping students at home. So I guess essentially we will be guided by the Department of Education and what they say. Currently, the model will be that yes, we do need to cater for students where families have said, for whatever reason, um, that they, they, they will be learning from home. Now, should that change, and probably down the track that will change, then we'll obviously revisit that according to what the Department of Education expect. Um, I like I, Marcus's question. Can Robert, I take this one? I'd Marcus, to to you. can I say I totally agree with you? And just for everyone's benefit, the question is, um, is there any plans to facilitate COVID vaccinations through school or is this something we should organise ourselves? Yes, you do have to organise it um, yourselves. But can I say, Marcus, I actually thought that was, we've actually discussed this here at school and said, like, why can't we open the doors? But we're not um, part of the, the government in terms of the task force. But um, unfortunately, we can't do that. Maybe down the track, I'm sure there will be the opportunity for COVID vaccinations um, as part of the vaccination rollout. But currently, you will actually have to facilitate that process yourself. And from the department too, for that, Marcus, uh, at the moment, they're prioritising our HSC students. 
um, because they are returning at an earlier stage to what our seven and eight students are. We are this little ecosystem here. Yeah. So I know that as soon as we see that advice, and I already saw a change in the last week, um, we will be able to then obviously give you more information as it comes to light for us through those updates that we do. Now, Aaron's got a great um, statement slash question just about ventilation and air filters around the school and classrooms. And I mean, I, I guess we've just got to start by saying we are a school for 1,200 students. We are not like another school. We are so fortunate in terms of the, what we have available to us. So I think where you're coming from in terms of ventilation and air filters, obviously it is an incredible building that yes, has both. Um, but also we actually have the space to be able to spread right out in this school. That's right, we're so fortunate. And that is something that we've been working on and deliberately thinking about what is best for our children, what minimises the, the co-mingling that Robin spoke about as one of our key factors here. Um, and we will have a plan ready to go for that as we start to see this come into fruition. And that next question, will students be required to be vaccinated? Um, we're not in the position to make those, um, those judgments. That does come back to the Department of Education. On a personal level, I would imagine at some stage in the future that could be the case. And as Chris mentioned before, the priority really is to get our HSC students back at school. Uh, so I know the priority, I know that you actually can get vaccinations between 12 to 16 years, but it's up to the, you know, it has been a complex area in terms of vaccination, so we can't really go there. However, I can say once again, teachers will be double vaccinated. And it is really nice, Olivia, thank you very much. We do appreciate the feedback about the comprehensive briefing and making it easier for families to plan. And essentially that's what we wanted to do. So I think by hearing that we have hit the mark, but also keep in mind if there are any other questions or anything that you would like to add, um, you can reach out to us. We are here on site, as you can see here today. Uh, we are happy to take the time because obviously on an individual basis, there are contexts that you have for your household that might also bear on advice that is given from the school. So please reach out, but thank you very much for your feedback, Olivia. Yes, and I think, I suppose, Chris, as you mentioned as well, what we are trying to do is to see that what we're doing now is just as valuable as being on site. Yes, it's different. You know, it's not the same. We don't have those physical connections with each other, but it's still incredibly important to maintain that continuity of learning. So I suppose our message tonight is keep up the great work. It has been a challenge, but we do have a two week break coming up. Then we've got the five weeks to go and then hopefully everyone will be back on board um, where possible. Yeah. And by doing that, by getting to the routines now, by forward forward thinking, thinking about hope and positivity, because I think, you know, every day we're getting closer up um, to life back on site, even though it won't be the same as, as what we had. It's certainly, we are very excited and very much looking forward to that, to that opportunity. And we've got a few things planned as well, which will be really exciting for our students. And I just want to touch just finally um, on the statement from Anonymous. Look, at the end of the day, just in terms of students being out and about, it is a partnership that we spoke about with the families at home. As a school, we have done everything that we can in terms of facilitating really rich opportunities during remote learning. But every child has to work flexibly and they have their own context of the households. I think at the end of the day, if we are ensuring that our students are doing the right thing in terms of between the family and the school, and facilitating that and making sure that they're not co-mingling when they return, um, that they do have a safe space. And keep in mind that there is a lot of sense of identity when students come to school. Hopefully, as we start to see students return to school, that will assist in some of those concerns that you have there in your comment. But thank you very much. We do appreciate it. Um, as always, if you have an opportunity to, just to pop your name down when you are putting it, if you are turning up as anonymous, it means that if we need to follow up, we can follow up with you individually as well. But please feel free to reach out to the school. On that note, Robert. I was just going to say, I don't think there's any more questions, Chris, but, but what we will do, just to let everybody know that um, next term, as we get closer to, and I keep on pinning my, you know, I hope it's on the 8th of November, we certainly will be presenting to you a, just some more concise information once we have, have that at hand. We don't want to do too much planning in case everything changes, because as everyone would know, everything changes on a daily basis, pretty much at 11 a.m on some days. So we really need to make sure that our information is um, as accurate as possible. And so we know that our students will be, will be prepared for on-site learning. And I, can I say, we are very much looking forward to that as I'm sure you are too.
So if there are no more questions. No, just another say, nice one from Sarah saying, thank you for your amazing work. Thank you, Sarah, we do appreciate it. And we thank you because I know that those sentiments are, uh, echo through our community, but equally, we want to thank you all for your incredible efforts in supporting your child and being advocates for your children. So thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it. And I must say to you, those lovely comments, we actually do share them with our staff and they really do appreciate the feedback they're getting from our community. So thank you once again. On that note, I'll say have a fantastic holiday. I think everyone does deserve a break um, and hopefully we'll have some nice weather. We can get outside, enjoy the sunshine, all the very, very best, and we'll see you again next term. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Thank you.